Hi everyone. Coronavirus and the resulting COVID-19 are changing every aspect of our lives. Shops are closed, offices quiet, parents of school children are wondering how to keep them occupied at home. Then there are those who have contracted or worse succumbed to the coronavirus. Many are hoarding food, cleaning supplies, other staples. It's a new world seemingly overnight. Fear and anxiety have gripped the nation. And let me say, please follow the sound medical advice of the professionals and medical health officials to protect yourself, protect your loved ones from this virus. Now, President Trump with his staff and the CDC, along with Governor Nome and Mayor Ten Haken of Sioux Falls have asked that we do not meet with a group larger than 10. Well, that puts us above the limit in most things we do here at Zion Lutheran. So with that being said, all activities at Zion are called off until further notice. So this includes all worship services on Sunday and Wednesdays during Lent, all the Sunday schools, the Bible studies, suppers, choir, Zion board meetings, LWML meetings, all small group ministries, all activities are called off. And we'll be continuing to evaluate the information about COVID-19 as released. And as you know, again, it seems to be changing daily. But the good news is this that we will be recording our Zion Lutheran Sunday worship service for our every Sunday broadcast on KSOO 1000 AM, which is on at 10 AM, but we'll also be making our Sunday worship service available on YouTube and through our various media outlets, our Facebook page, our weekly email list, there'll be a link, our website, and we'll continue to do this weekly as long as we are asked not to gather together. And we hope to give you these types of updates on a regular basis as well. Also let you know that our staff will be in the office during regular hours throughout the week. So if you want to come in and have communion, I'd ask you to make an appointment with Maxine and I would love to give you private communion. If you want to come in and talk and or pray, again, make an appointment and I'd be happy to talk and pray. We are available as your staff as usual, only minus some of the visiting that we are accustomed to do. It's important that we honor those who have been put in authority, that we go with their recommendations. It's a fourth commandment issue for us because it tells us to respect government authority as it acts for the well-being of our great nation and the world. It makes me think of Romans chapter 13, verses 3 and 4, For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. And the good citizen leaders of this nation, they're trying to limit the harm, and we support them. We view this limitation of church services more as a duty and an opportunity to act for the benefit of our fellow citizens, especially for those most vulnerable among us. Love your neighbor as yourself. And let me say how wonderful it is to serve and to worship a God who has ultimate authority and power over everything that is seen and unseen. Every trial and tribulation in our life is an opportunity for us to re-examine our conscience, to draw closer to the Lord and embrace Him from the depths of our hearts. So during this global crisis, it's important for us believers not to become anxious, not to become overly fearful, but to pray without ceasing so that the peace of God which passes our understanding, will guard our hearts, guard our minds in Christ Jesus. We must exercise a dimension of faith while battling mountains in this fallen world. It makes me think of David while battling Goliath. He was more focused on the glory and the power and the faithfulness of God than the physical strength of that giant. You see, worry is not our companion. Panic is not our style. Rather, we respond with prayer. And as believers, every one of our prayers counts. It's time that believers act. We act with discernment and encouragement, and we edify each other and those in our circles of influence. Let me share a couple of ways to encourage each other in these days of isolation. Given that many students and families are shut in, consider sending some of our elderly members cards. Maybe have your children color them a picture or write on the card or you write on the card. If you might have an interest in this activity, contact us at the office and we'll be happy to connect you with names. I also encourage you to call five people each, someone 
who may be on your heart. Maybe it's a friend, a family member, a fellow church member, an old friend, or especially those who you know will be isolated and alone during these days. If you know a need and are able to take care of it for someone, then do that. If you have a need or know of a need and can't take care of it, please call the church office. We have volunteers who have indicated they are ready to help. In the face of the COVID-19 threat, with all of its fears, all of its uncertainties, we can shine as people who have certain hope through our faith. Let our response reflect to other people around us that we live in faith, not fear, that we are filled with hope. And our hope is not in science. It's not in technology or medicine. Our hope is in the one who has given us these good gifts and the greater gifts of life and salvation through the forgiveness of our sins. And you see, through your faithful and hope-filled witness during this public health crisis, it's possible that people in your life will repent and receive the healing that only Jesus can provide. Again, please, please, please follow the sound advice of the medical and public health officials to protect yourself, protect your loved ones from this virus. But do not fear. You are God's own child. You are washed in the waters of holy baptism. You are cleansed by the blood of Jesus, and you are filled with hope. And there is a realm of deepest intimacy with Christ that God is calling us to be in during this time. And in that realm of intimacy, we realize it's Christ who dwells within us. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You see, here in COVID-19, there's a new opportunity for us to bring good news to our dying world. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God bless you.